Does love exist on other planets? Do aliens need a driving license for a UFO? Probably not if they keep crashing them. All of these questions you can find the answer to on this Paranormal Life! Hello everyone and hey. welcome to This Paranormal Life, the comedy paranormal podcast where every week myself and the man across from me, Kit Greer Mulvena, investigate a brand new paranormal tale, case, claim, or beast and come to a conclusion at the end of the show as to whether or not that thing truly is paranormal. Kit, before we begin, I want to say to you, Happy Valentine's Day. Wow, happy Valentine's Day indeed. Thank you, um, thank you. What's the etiquette here? Am I supposed to say, has Cupid been nice to you? I don't know. I guess you just usually say, like, I love you. Say, like, I love you. That's not going to happen, so... And just share, you know, because we've been friends for a really long time now. Yes, we have. And, you know, I think Almost it like was... Brothers. I think it was, like, week three that I said that I loved you. <laughs> yeah, right. like, I we, just kind of we knew we from were the start. We were six years old. It was, it's not a joke. Kit gave me half of his popsicle, and I said, I love you, man. <laughs> Weird actually, food <laughs> to share as well. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly romantic food to... You gave me half his popsicle and half of his hot like dog. Like, it's not like giving you a Malteser or something. It's like, yeah. Yeah, and I've kind of been waiting now for around 15 years for you to say it back. Probably longer, actually. No, yeah, probably about longer, 20, yeah. 25 years for you to just say it back now. <laughs> so it's like, seven, actually. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but at some point in today's episode on Valentine's Day, well, I think we're the, a day before Valentine's Day or after. We're close to Valentine's Day. I thought maybe you could, maybe, I don't know, it might be the day you say it. Valentine's Day, more about romantic love, isn't it, though, really? Uh, mm. You know, the Greeks, they had all their different, the platonic love, platonic, platonic love, where, sure. you know, that's the love yeah. between friends, and then familial love, and all these different things, and then you had romantic love, and I think that's the one that Cupid specialises in. Well, you're not wrong, Kit. Today we are here to celebrate romantic love, but all kinds of love. Because today we are going to bring our listeners a very special This Paranormal Life Valentine's Day episode. <laughs> what was that voice? I'm hoping there's a lot of reverb to it. Valentine. <laughs> like arrow kind of flying mm. across, hearts exploding. And we are here today to celebrate love, every form of love, platonic, romantic, reverse cowgirl, every position and expression of love. As you know, Kit, usually on Valentine's Day, I would book dinner at a romantic restaurant, then fake cardiac arrest halfway through my solo dinner just to ruin the evening for everyone else. Get out of paying that bill, am I right? But today I'm feeling a little bit different. Because Ebenezer Scrooge style, I was visited last night by the ghosts of three of my ex-wives. Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear it. I was wondering why you were looking like shit. Well, yeah, actually, I also stayed up too late playing Call of Duty, so I didn't get a ton of sleep. And then I was woken up at 6 a.m. because my Amazon delivery was coming okay. to the office. And but, but mostly it was the love thing. It was the love thing. And my ex-wives appeared to me and they tried to, they wanted me to change. They yeah, wanted me to change for the better. unsurprising. We all want you to change. That's not really an ex-wife thing. So, yes, we are here today to investigate the paranormal, but we're also here to celebrate love. And if you've listened to this podcast before, you may be familiar with the name Dr. J. Allen Hynek. Are we ever? A, a name that rings truer in my mind than my own father's name. We love this guy. If it doesn't sound familiar, he was the scientific advisor to the US government on UFOs in the 1950s and 60s. And Dr. Hynek also wrote a lot about UFOs and aliens in his time as an advisor. One piece he wrote in 1972 discussed the different levels of interactions that humans could have with aliens. We've all heard it before. A close encounter of the first kind, seeing strange lights and objects in the sky. Close encounters of the second kind, that's a UFO event that could leave physical evidence or scorch marks, radiation poisoning. But did you know that this scale goes all the way up to a close encounter of the seventh kind? Woo! Se paranormal seventh base? <laughs> and that is where UFO abductee David Huggins found himself in 1961. It's time to celebrate love on today's episode oh no, of the podcast. It's gonna happen! 
Oh no! As we investigate. Right, before, oh, oh, just before <laughs> we get carried away, because this is a family show, and I don't want us to get railroaded into. And, I'm sorry, it's bad use of phrase. I don't want, want us to get railed into no shit sorry i don't want us to plow down a all right i need to stop talking you gotta stop bud i just don't want us to turn into a bad sort of an episode that families can't listen to together i agree with you this is a family show and that's why we're gonna keep it light you were celebrating love and love is a beautiful thing it's not necessarily x-rated hardcore oh intense gang action okay it's sometimes love is just between two people who care about each other very much. Well, I know that and the audience knows that. I th- I just wanted to make sure you weren't taking us down a road we didn't want to go down. No, I'm sure a lot of people do want to go down this road. And that's why today we are investigating David Huggins, the man who lost his virginity to an alien. He lost his virginity to a what? An alien. Oh my God. We are going to tell you the entire story start to finish right after a quick word from today's sponsors. And of course, remember, you can get every episode of This Paranormal Life ad-free over on patreon.com forward slash This Paranormal Life. David Huggins was born in rural Georgia in 1944 on a farm out in... Another southern bell like yourself. Yes, but that's where the similarities end. (laughs) He was born out on a farm in the middle of the endless rural farmland, growing up off the land, raising cows, feeding pigs cutting grass. It was hard work, but he said he enjoyed it. What he didn't enjoy, however, was the weekly church services. Now, growing up, his grandparents took him to some pretty intense evangelical Baptist church services, the kind with people speaking in tongues and converting members of the crowd. Right. I don't go to church now, but growing up, I did. Mm -hmm. And... I would have loved some speaking in tongues. I would have loved some kind of mayhem. That would have actually really appealed to me as an eight-year-old. Yeah. I, you, you know, so I was... We have a pretty diverse religious background, I would say. You know, I was raised in a Quaker household. So I actually <laughs> was raised going to Quaker meeting as a child. The worst place you can possibly bring a child with undiagnosed ADHD <laughs> is like, hey... God they, wants they you to, you to were a shut demon. your f-ing mouth for an hour straight and not move. And if yeah. you and if you do, you might be the devil. It's True. like, all right, well, I'm finding it really hard not to make a noise for an hour straight. <laughs> right. we, they got 45 seconds into it before Rory went, mm, go, go, Power Rangers. <laughs> all right, all right. You're in the sin bin. You're in timeout. The a whole crowd of Quakers with their hands on my head. I'm speaking in borderline <laughs> tongues because I can't stay still for five you're seconds. Doing the f-ing Pokemon rap. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like, please, Lord, pray for you. You're like, <laughs> Pidgey, Ratata, <laughs> Electro, Diglett, Nidoran, Mankey. <laughs> Honestly, God, just kill the child. <laughs> it seems to be kinder. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, then I went to you know uh, we went to a Catholic school. You know okay. you know my dad loved uh, Buddhism. Okay. Then you, you, we've been to so many. We celebrated Diwali growing up. Okay. Uh, but I've only ever once been to a church where they did the whole. I think I had gone a few times and I was like, hey, this is like a nice church. I'm vibing with this. Great message. Uh, good congregation. Good leaders. And then at one point they did put their hands on somebody's head and they turned to goo and fell on the ground. And I was like, I'm going to get my coat. Right. I'm going to get my coat, I think. Because uh, that's a little bit far for, for me. Yeah. Um, I, I think I know the church you're talking about. You do. I, I've heard rumors. You do know it. I've heard, you've, heard, you've heard about the glitter? You've heard about, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say glitter. <laughs> I should say gold <laughs> dust. Heard about the gold dust, right? I think I feel like you let the end of the story out before we, it actually began. Yeah, sometimes gold dust rains down on people in the church, <laughs> and that's the Holy Spirit. I think we should move on <laughs> before one of us discloses <laughs> the name of this church. Well, well, all I'll say is they're going through uh, uh, a national news level scandal. Yeah, uh, so not that hard to find, actually. Yeah, not too hard. So, needless to say. David Huggins, even as a child, wasn't interested in these types of church services. In fact, these intense religious services actually turned David off of religion as a child, which is sort of a shame because religion might have been a better way to explain 
what was about to happen to David over the next few years? <laughs> I, I think from the intro, it's not going to explain shit. I don't think, I'm just saying, I don't think Sunday school explains a close encounter of the seventh kind. Just saying. Mm, well, there's more to the story than just alien sex. Okay. To be clear. To be clear. I don't want to just, I don't want people to read that headline. You and also say, didn't say it was alien sex. It's a fa- well, you did one say I did lost say his virginity. That, yeah. Fine. As a child, David started hearing voices. Exploring the farmland growing up, he would see strange things. Things that no one else in the family was seeing. Because trust me, he asked. And they would know if they were seeing these things or not. The first encounter took place when he was eight years old. He was playing at the base of a tree out in the yard when he heard a voice say, David, behind you. He turned around, curious to see who had called him. And there, standing in front of him at the base of the tree, was a small, hairy, humanoid creature with large, glowing eyes. What? Yeah, we're really we're really hitting the ground running uh, with today's Christ episode. Alive. There's no messing around. We're getting into the thick of it. David said he thought it was the boogeyman. And for a split second, his brain sort of malfunctioned, and it was as if he was seeing himself through the creature's eyes. Whoa, this is a pretty genuinely paranormal little experience here. Yeah. David immediately freaked out and ran away as fast as he could. The little hairy guy did the exact same thing. And this was the first encounter that David claims he had with a creature that was not from this world. All right, let's put a pause there. All right. What, what's that Time about? Time out. There's a lot of theories going around. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to learn quite quickly that David believes he is someone that is sort of a point of contact between the human race and alien races. Right. I mean, an old idea that a kind of shamanic person, a medium, a medium that meaning a person who stands between our world and the next world and can transport information between the two. Um, we're just more used to them having cool druid names rather than being called David. Yes. And being eight years old. And not being eight years old, yeah. of course. But hey, you know, in the spirit of it being Valentine's week and celebrating love, uh, there's one way to look at this, which is quite scary that a, a tiny little hairy space monkey tried to attack an eight-year-old boy. But could this be the beginning of a relationship between humans and aliens bridging the gap? Really glad you finished that sentence, yeah. Yeah, it very well could be, because I think we're going to find Kit. That oh, sorry, this you think it's an sorry. alien? Uh, that is that is what David believes. Okay. Is a creature from another planet. And do you, I don't want to obviously tell the story, I don't want to hear the story, mm-hmm. nor tell the story of the Dublin Gorilla Man. But from what right. I gather, you were a young child who saw a thing. Older than eight. So do you... Really? I was older than eight. I was about f- th- 14 years old. I believe. 14, 15 years old. Oh. Yeah. Uh, do you feel it's any because you've kind never let kinship? me tell the story, so you didn't actually know what age I was. Yeah, no, but I was about no, 15 gonna years old. No, we're definitely not going to hear it now, oh, because that now hurts. that I know that you were a little kind of... Your brain was kind of just pickled by video games at that point, so you definitely mm. didn't know what you were talking about. Maybe... This could be like my Valentine's Day thing, because I would love to tell this story. I would love for you to <laughs> shut up and get back to today's case. Ooh, I would love it if you weren't so mean to me sometimes and let me tell the story that I had when I was a child. This kind of changed me as a person. I would love, I would, <laughs> mwah, 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 I would love <laughs> if you uh, could read the f***ing room <laughs> and tell the story that you've got the script for right in front of you. You know, you are right. That this is not the first encounter. There are many more that we need to get on to. Fortunately, I don't think we have time for my own personal encounters with a, with a little hairy guy, possibly from another planet. So let's continue David's story. Fine. Before we do go any further, I want to clarify that every story that we hear today is straight from David, who is still alive, I believe. All of these stories are documented in the fantastic documentary Love and Saucers, which you can watch online, and I would recommend it. I just want to clarify that because things are about to get so much wilder. Okay. So bear in mind, this is all from David himself. Strap in. On the next encounter, David was heading to the barn by his house to pick up a baseball, but he paused in his tracks. He heard a noise that sounded like it was coming from behind the barn. So he crept around the corner and there 
towering in front of him was an insect-like being, standing tall like a giant praying mantis. Oh my god! Before David could even scream, the creature skeeted him with bluish-gray liquid. Okay. David panicked and began to run back to the house, and as he did, the strange liquid began evaporating from his body until it completely disappeared. Okay. I was worried for a second there, as I'm sure he was, that like in the kind of Ridley Scott's Alien franchise, Mm -hmm. that David was going to be with the one evaporating from the skeet. Right. Acid. That's what I think of when I think of aliens excreting liquid. Their saliva or whatever they can shoot out is acid and it burns away at metal, let alone human flesh. Which Uh, we don't know if that's accurate. But in this case, um, you're saying... There was no evidence left by the time he got to the house. Evaporated. Wow. Poof. Can you believe it? Oh, so annoying. But presumably his clothes were wet or something. Completely clean. Ah. Spotless. And then presumably when he brought someone back to the barn to see if the creature was there. The six foot praying mantis was gone, of course. Okay. These bizarre sightings continued for years. Seeing creatures, strange lights, little gray men. And they didn't. <laughs> and they didn't. So that's a lot. That is a big list to just kind of rattle through. Yeah. 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 If there's any indication of where we're going, I need to get through a lot of this. <laughs> well, yeah. Smaller stuff. Mm-hmm. And they didn't stop with just the jizz. It David. Wasn't jizz. David claims that these aliens were breaking into the house and wandering around his room at night. The funny thing was that once the initial shock wore off, David said the encounters were weird, but not all that threatening. Well, I mean, even snake charmers eventually become immune to the snake venom once you get bit a couple hundred times. Right, you think so, that you was know, like... If you're getting visited by aliens that often, they're either harmless or you're dead, you know? Right. It's just, you know, usual routines, wake up in the morning, get changed, brush your teeth, giant praying mantis wanks over you, <laughs> get on the school bus, it's already gone by the time you hit the back seat. It's just part of your everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) These encounters continued all throughout his childhood, but one encounter would stand out amongst the rest. Phil, play the sexy music. No, no. One day, David was. Turn off that music. Absolutely turn off that music. No. Sorry, it's Valentine's Day, and I know I alluded to some things that were going to happen later on in the episode, and needless to say, we're getting close. Phil, play the sexy music, please. No. One day, David oh God, was walking alone in horrible. the woods. All right, listen, we are, we are both hosts on this. I know this is your episode and I respect that, but you've got to kill the goddamn music. And we've got to take this seriously because it's a paranormal case. Oh, well, love is the most paranormal thing out there, brother. One day, David was walking alone in the woods when he spotted a woman sitting by herself under a tree. This was a little strange because out here, you wouldn't really bump into many strangers. It was also weird because... As soon as she began walking towards him, David became aroused. Okay. He says he began to undress himself, but accidentally fell backwards with his trousers around his ankles. (laughs) We've all been there. We've all been there. It does happen. It does happen. A little too excited. I remember my first restraining order. (laughs) And that's when she mounted him. As I was saying, usually on Patreon we can go into full detail on episodes. But yes, I understand this is a public episode, so we're going to uh, beep a few parts of the, the story at this point. So once the alien creature mounted him, it grabbed his Oh my god. Till his Jesus Christ. It thinks like a cream donut oh god what is wrong with you you wrote that down once they were done david passed out he awoke 30 minutes later naked and confused but this would be known as the first time he would make love to his alien girlfriend known as crescent can i pull the handbrake on this episode or something. I want to get off. I want to get off the ride wherever we're going. We do have a break coming up, but sure. You know what? Let's, yeah. Jesus Christ. You have problems. I got answers. Let's hear them. What's the problem? I'm just saying that 
if we were going to hear this insane encounter, I would have preferred that, you know, we've had witnesses in the past that, for example, they're like sheriffs. Sure. And they they volunteer down at the local children's hospital and they are known and liked and respected in their community. Yeah. And then a strange thing happens. It turns their life upside down, like the seventh encounter here that you just mentioned. Mm. And then we, and then we, and then we kind of, he's good. They've got to wrestle with that. How do I reconcile these crazy things that have happened to me when I'm such a respectable member of society? This guy was on the fringes already. This guy is, he, this guy is a a hardworking country boy born, raised off the land. You know, do you ever think that maybe the reason we don't hear these stories from your witnesses, the doctors, the scientists is because they're uggos and that's why (laughs) they don't have alien girlfriends. Right. You're saying they, <laughs> right? They have, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Something to think about. They have, have no to raise a question. honeys, alien honeys. Whereas David has a girlfriend who's literally out of this world. You know the way, yeah. Like <laughs> like rappers say they got like a chick in every state or whatever. David has like he is a side piece in every <laughs> star system, galaxy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'm lost for words again. Let's move on. Hey, look, I, I realize that this is a crazy story today, but I watched the entire documentary Love and Saucers. It's kind of sweet. And the way David talks about it, he's very not, he's very honest sweet. about it and very upfront about it. I would recommend it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about David and his claims, but we still do have a lot to get through. Uh, because as we know, he started seeing these creatures when he was very young. He grew up alongside them. Now we're at the point when David is leaving Georgia in the mid 60s for art school in New York City. When he did that, he was surprised to see that Crescent, the little beings, and the six foot grasshopper all followed. (laughs) I thought you told me he was a hardworking country lad. Now you're telling me he went to NYU film? He went to art school in New York City. Because he wanted to express himself. He wanted to express himself. <laughs> when you've seen the things David has, you have to get it out of your head. He moved, Otherwise, you go loco. He moved to a warehouse in Bushwick, changed his name to <laughs> Toast. And, you know, and he had a weird phase, okay? Yeah, me, Toast, and Blanket are all heading to, heading to this rave tonight. Yeah, we think there's going to be a couple praying mantises there, probably. <laughs> it is very New York, isn't it, to be in a living situation that's that strange that you're like yeah i'm kind of in like this loft conversion uh sharing the place with a grasshopper and crescent my (laughs) alien girlfriend there's a couple old ladies that you know use the use our kitchen when we're not using the kitchen but it's pretty chill david has just left his home to go to new york and while he was there his extraterrestrial experiences only continued to get stranger david started having strange dreams every night Crescent kept appearing. David says they were like dreams, but they felt so real that he was convinced that they were taking place somewhere in the real world. So one day on the walk home from art school, knowing that Crescent was going to appear in his dreams again, he decided to swing by a local florist and pick up some flowers. So just to be clear, she is a dream. No, no, no. It's a dream. No, no. These dreams and are so, you're so telling real me... <laughs> that they're, they must be happening in he... real life. He had a wet dream. <laughs> no, he didn't. Before, when he, he, when don't he made insult love him like to that. Crescent. <laughs> Look, we've talked about on this podcast before. I know about dreams that are so real that you're convinced that they happen. <laughs> like the time that I met Hillary Duff in my dreams when I was obsessed with Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> the fact that you're segueing so, from talking about wet dreams into that. <laughs> it was a dry, that was a dry dream. You should be ashamed of yourself. All I wanted was her phone number. That yeah, was it. I bet. I know you think that they might be dreams, Kit, but the next day when David woke up, he said the flowers were gone. She would show up, they'd have (laughs) sex, the giant Uh praying mantis would show up too and watch from the shadows. It was also common to David that by this point, anytime he talks about it, he seems like he's just remembering it pretty fondly. Like it was a a past love. He's like, yeah, I remember that. We were going out, we used to hang out, she'd come and visit. We'd make love. The mantis was there. David also began to paint his experiences, trying to capture the events on canvas as a way to share them with other people and hopefully remember the moments better himself. Yeah, didn't think of a camera. 
or a, or how a do you video photograph camera? a dream? My, yeah, exactly. I don't appreciate exactly the vibes you're bringing to this podcast. I thought this was gonna be a fun little episode where we get to talk about love, celebrate sharing emotions and bodily fluids with creatures from another not universe. Well. He is not well. He needs help, and not from a an Andromeda nine. A bad bee from the planet <laughs> Interstellar 5. Look, I appreciate it's maybe hard to visualize these events that I'm telling you. I'm, t I'm saying that they're dreams, they're portals. I'm saying it's an alien, but it's a woman. It's hard. This is what these paintings are for. This is why he did these paintings. Show me the painting. I'm going to send you a painting. Uh, I believe this is him with a painting of Crescent, his alien I am girlfriend. so worried. I am so worried. I just want to remind you that this is a piece of human expression done from the heart. And on Valentine's Day, that's where we treasure the heart, okay? So bear that in mind when I send you this picture. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> it does kind of get funnier the longer you look at it. <laughs> Well, I assume if you're on YouTube.com, we've been well, no, demonetized. We, well, yeah, we can't we've show been demonetized. this. We, can't we might show be it. able to show a censored image, which gives the audio listeners at home an idea of the level of image we're dealing with here. I'll, I'll tell you this. If we're showing you a censored image, you ain't seeing much of the image. You're seeing it, David. You're seeing <laughs> David. That's what you're seeing. Uh, so, David, who's very old. Oh, he's 77 he was 77 when they did the documentary. He must be approaching 80. Very old. I hope he's still alive. Um, he's, a, he's a nice guy. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> he's holding... This is a life-size painting, which is interesting. Interesting choice. It is... How would you describe it, Kit? All it is... <laughs> is, a com is a completely naked woman. Well, not completely. Yes, completely. Not completely woman, and the though. the only thing... <laughs> Only thing he is he is painted a naked woman, just a completely nude woman holding her boobs. Yeah, I was gonna get to that. Okay, cupping cupping their naturals, um, and the only difference is just the their face is an alien gray face, the most typical boilerplate alien face you've ever seen. Right, still has hair. The only thing that's different: long black hair, nice black hair, and uh, just an alien face. He has gone on record to say he doesn't know whether the hair is a wig or not. It's Which, a wig. when you're looking, at <laughs> it's a wig. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is hideous. So that is what I believe. That is Crescent, the alien woman that he made love to. Does that make it better or worse? The fact that she is essentially ninety-eight percent human, rather than like a ball of tentacles. You know. Kit turned his mic off. Kit is grabbing his phone. And his wallet, I think he's leaving. Patreon.com, everyone, is uh, is the place if you want to find some extra content. Nice. Uh, some kind of different content from this paranormal life. Cool. Oh, that's just, no, that's just what I need. Another, I, just think, uh, I just think a hiatus. This is good. I just think a, yeah. I, I just think a hiatus. I just think a, no, a kind of great. indefinite little break. What do you know? Another Valentine's Day think, alone for Rory right. Powers. Fantastic. Right. No, that's good. Um, this happens. Enjoy, enjoy the after your lunch and the afternoon, and uh, yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. This happens every time I show this picture on Valentine's Day. Honestly, I'm getting sick of it. For once, I'd like to just show this picture at a restaurant on Valentine's Day to someone, and for them to go, "Huh, that is pretty interesting, Rory. I think, I think David is is actually onto something pretty interesting." So cool. Shit, I forgot. I forgot my keys. Nice. So Kit's leaving. Uh. Which is, which is actually so f***ed because I had like six other paintings to show him, which I don't. I mean, I could. I mean, we could look at them now if you want, but I, there's no one here right. to talk to. Okay. So. Show me, all right, I'll show you the paintings and I'll head on. All right. I'm just worried that you're going to see the next one and then you're going to leave again. Because <laughs> that was honestly like the, the tamest one so far. <laughs> it's the most tasteful. Uh, the next painting is one that David did depicting the first encounter he had with Crescent in the woods. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Shit on it! 
Uh, there are so many more pictures that I could show you. Some more graphic, some less graphic. There are paintings of... I'll see if I can get oh, one good. of the, the praying mantis. Oh, good. Okay, here you go. Oh, here's a great one. Because I know we've been talking about them coming through a portal and the little gray guys and the praying mantis and things like that. This is one that has zero nudity in it, but shows you, gives you an illustration of what it was like to witness these events from David's point of view. Yeah, this is a bit strange, all right. Point of view of David in a kind of Lynchian bedroom, a kind of dream world bedroom, very cold and abstract. And at the end of his bed, in the moonlight, or through a portal, whatever that's supposed to be, tall alien, two little mini bodyguard aliens, and then, <laughs> and then the prey... The prey. I thought you were joking about the the prey man just watching what's happening in the corner, but he's in the corner watching. That little guy's a freak. I feel like if I saw all those aliens at the start, I would have assumed maybe the little greys and crescent were gonna continue to visit me and like hang out. Mm. The praying mantis guy. That's kind of like when your friends keep bringing the weird friend that they have around, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh no. I mean, yeah, no, it's cool if he comes, but like, I thought it was just gonna be us tonight. And they're like, oh, Manti? No, Manti's cool. He's just going to stand in the corner over there and, and watch. You, you're and like, can we sidebar real quick? He's weird, man. He's, he's weird. too quiet. We bring him. The aliens are disappointingly so generic. Yeah. I mean, so is Crescent if it wasn't for yes. her female body and black hair. God. They just have literally alien heads. Why? Why? Why does Crescent take a female human form? Is, is that... Uh, Crescent has chosen to take that form? Or I don't is that know. what they look like? I don't know if David ever really got to the bottom of it. It seems weird if she can give herself a female body that a human would find appealing, but then also has to wear a wig. Yeah. Just wear like a, a pound shop wig on top of everything. It is very confusing. Unfortunately, the story doesn't get simpler. In fact, it only gets a little bit stranger. Because while these events did continue, everything changed one night when Crescent appeared and said to him, David, the baby is dying. Oh no, what? To be honest, this is where, even for me, the story goes completely off the rails. I watched the entire documentary, like I said, and the frustrating thing is David himself, he tells this in the most nonchalant, chilled out way possible. He's kind of this guy who's like, he's like, look, I really don't care whether you believe it or not or think I'm crazy. I'm literally just telling you what I think happened. He is completely convinced that he had sex with this alien and all of these events took place. This part, however, did push my limits. David said he went through a portal where he bumped into the praying mantis, demanded to see his baby, and when he got there, he realized that basically he'd made a baby every time he'd had sex with Crescent. Mm -hmm. Meaning there was an entire room filled with human-alien hybrid babies. I believe he claims to have over 100. Very good. It's quite hard to figure out where David is in his journey right now. In one claim, I saw him say that the encounter stopped on August 17th, 1987. Then... At that point, David actually got married to a human woman and had a human baby and lived a pretty normal life, repressing all the memories and events that took place. Uh, but then it looks like things ramped up again. I think in one article where he was interviewed, he was like, oh, I saw Crescent six months ago. She's back. Oh, my God. Can you, ima can you imagine getting into a relationship and your partner's ex was an alien? <laughs> I mean, where would you do? Yeah, I mean, I guess it just depends on what you what you're like as a person in a relationship. But I think most people, you're probably not gonna be jealous. Yeah, until <laughs> until they're like, yeah, how was the love making? It was out of this world, literally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, it's very hard to compete with. Yeah, it's like okay, but, but yeah, but, oh, but baby, our, our relationship is is even better. Yeah. Our relationship is even better, and and you're and you're like, okay, so did you dump them or no? No, she just went back to her planet. Okay, right. cool. Oh, so you So they could come back right. at any point. It's like, yeah, I guess they could. Yeah. I guess they could. Now you mention it. That would be man, that would be amazing actually. Yeah, if you, <laughs> they you came like back. them. Mm, I don't think I would. So you guys are different, you know, like uh you know, they 
made love to me for 17 light years. You did it 17 seconds, you know? <laughs> right. But I like that about you. It's fast. It's efficient, you know? <laughs> I've never been in a situation where I've had to be terrified or intimidated by a current partner's ex. Yes. I feel like at one point when I was a teenager, I was dating a girl whose ex-boyfriend was in prison <laughs> for biting off someone's finger. And that was the most I've ever been like, ha, ah, that's cool. That's cool. What prison's he in? Is it secure though? Because I don't have any fingers to lose. You know, like <laughs> she's like, actually, he got out the other day with good behavior. Oh, is that so? He said he wanted a snack and they let him out. What? <laughs> yeah, I think you do hear of like funny celebrity ones sometimes. I guess with celebrities, they will sometimes go between dating normals and uh, other celebrities. Yeah. So, you know, you could, I suppose, have a situation where um, your partner's ex was like, I don't know, Lady Gaga or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that would be maybe a little intimidating because celebrities are cool. I guess it's probably like the girls that we went out with in secondary school, mm -hmm. they were probably like, oh my God, did you hear they have this podcast now? It's so cool, you know? Yeah. They're probably like, oh, I actually... Right, oh, so, so uh, you're saying, right, so they're, right, they're partners. Later... They say... They, they, they're, they're like, like, oh, that's so intimidating. That like, Yeah, they're like... Oh. Her ex is like a paranormal podcast. Podcast That's crazy. Like one of the biggest in the UK. Yeah, I don't know Globally, because your ex-girlfriend, like her, her partner now is like a human rights lawyer and he's actually... I think he's at like the UN and stuff. Oh, Stephen. Yeah. Yes, no, Stephen's a really so cool guy. He's actually pretty... He's actually changing the world in a pretty big way. Yeah, no, it's... And it's... I'm looking forward to seeing how he continues to do it after I bite off one of his little <laughs> fingers. Hell yeah. I'm coming for you, Stephen. I was the ex. <laughs> <laughs> they call me the nibbler. <laughs> Better lock your doors at night, Stephen. I'm, com <laughs> I'm coming for you. And Claire, please forgive me. Do you really want to go out with a guy who's only got nine fingers? <laughs> no, I'm still rocking all ten over here. Uh, look, this is basically the end of our story. I know this is an insane one, possibly one of the weirdest and wildest we've ever investigated on the podcast. Possibly one of the worst. As I said, David Huggins, he's, he's very clear repeatedly in the documentaries and interviews. He does not care if anyone believes his story. Doesn't sound like it. But anytime he tells them, he's completely honest. All he wants to do is do his paintings, share his experiences to those who will listen to him, and just share this weird story that he has and that he is convinced took place. I think there's parts of this story that we could debate on a regular episode of This Paranormal Life, but I haven't even mentioned some of the craziest stuff that he claims has taken place over the last... God, I mean, he's saying he's been repeatedly abducted and had intercourse with aliens for 60 years. That's a very tall claim. To not have a single shred of evidence. <laughs> right. You to know? Not, to not like, to not be like, okay, I know it's going to happen like clockwork next week. So I'm going to like strap a GoPro to my <laughs> yeah. nutsack just to capture oh, a Jesus single Christ. frame of an evidence. But he, it feels like he hasn't made an attempt. And I think that's my biggest problem is this constant uh, repetition of the fact that this is all essentially taking place in dreams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's well, where that's where he finds his excuses. Unfortunately, yes. is the fact that even when he talks about going through portals, he he says some wild stuff. Uh, you know, it, it goes beyond just them coming to visit him. He claims he's been on alien crafts, flying through space, looking down at Earth on their intergalactic spaceships, looking after his hundred alien babies. It's very far out there stuff, uh, and I I watch it and I see the documentary and I'm like, hey, as long as you're not hurting anyone and you believe this, that's fine. Because it seems like this is the only thing stopping you from hurting people. I Yeah, I was like, I don't think I can get on board with this. But I wanted to cover this episode on our Valentine's Day episode because it's so very rare that we have a alien kind of abduction story that involves intimacy that blossoms into a beautiful relationship. I don't and I know, think that's worth I don't celebrating. Know that it is a beautiful relationship. Well, I is. don't think they have... I think you mentioned he's abducted every time against his will. 
Um, mm, I think it was consensual towards the end. Maybe yeah, not the praying mantis shit. Such but... thing as a consensual abduction. Y- yeah, I think I think you're you're absolutely right. It is a rare thing. A rare rare to normally we're dealing with glimpses of the paranormal, glimpses of yeah. the extraterrestrial world. Rare that we get to see anything more, anything more human than that. And of course, isn't that the point? Isn't that the point that other creatures in the universe we can't anthropomorphize them. We can't say that they're going to have human emotions, human feelings, look at the world through a human lens. Animals don't even do that here on Earth. We can't say that they're going to experience love, experience kinship, these things that we feel. But they also might. We don't know. We don't know. And if the purpose for their visits is to make some sort of alien-human hybrid baby, we can say that they have done it. No, we can't. We we surely can. It is time for conclusions. <laughs> It's uh I think if this proves anything, it is it is man's inbuilt Jungian archetypal deep in the unconscious brain desire to bang aliens. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh Kit stick that in the trailer. <laughs> uh Kit, of course, at the end of every episode, even silly ones like this, we do have to come down on a decision as to whether or not we truly believe this happened, whether or not we believe it's paranormal. What are you thinking today? No. All right. It's a double no, for sure. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. You know what it isn't a double no to? Love. Okay. All right. Lo- every Decide fo- what you think. Decide what love. it is you think love is. Because you told us it's one thing, and then you took us on a hour-long randy rampage through the paranormal. Yeah. And then at the end, you're trying to tie it in a nice bow. I can I don't tell you, you can what love that. is, kid. Love is... Yeah, all right. Love is endless. I might head out again, honestly. Love is unwavering. Yeah. Love uh-huh. is... Love is sharing an umbrella in the rain. Love is cooking breakfast for your partner without asking for anything in return. Love is a nine-foot praying mantis. Okay, there it is. Excreting goo yeah. across a farm. That's love to me. I actually think that was kind of beautiful. I really think it was. So I hope that you loved this episode of the podcast. I hope you're having a great Valentine's Day. Uh, Whether you're celebrating with your loved ones, with your family, by yourself. Galentine's. Galentine's Day. When I was single at university, because I was such a cool guy, I used to, on Valentine's Day, uh, just treat myself to whatever food and drink that I wanted as like a nice little way to, to love myself. Unfortunately, that meant me eating three large Domino's pizzas and a pint of Ben and Jerry's cookie dough to the point where I had to pass out of my bed at 7.30. Once Rory saw the Domino's app Valentine's deals, which were (laughs) supposed to be for two people, he couldn't resist. Uh, I I had to call up and fake that I had a girlfriend in the next room. I was like, yeah, we're calling out the Valentine's deal. Yeah, Yeah, I want the- Shania, what do you want? (laughs) Yeah, Twain, right? Pretty cool, huh? I think I'll go for the stuffed crust. Oh, you don't want... Okay, fine. You know what? The missus gets what the missus wants. No stuffed crust, please. (laughs) Hey, Sydney Sweeney. Hey, Sydney Sweeney, what do you want? Hey, babe? Yeah. Yeah, well, no, it's not weird that I call her Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, and I'm actually going to be her later tonight. No. Because I'm not alone. And I have a girlfriend. I insist that Phil cuts that for <laughs> I uh, I did once, same as you, I did once uh, when I lived in Belfast back in the day, I uh, was alone one Valentine's and uh, same thing. I was like, I was like, this is a bit sad. Um, I didn't have much food sad. in the house, so I wanted, totally to, uh, I wanted to get some food. So I was like, hey, I know and, and Irish listeners will know that a safe bet, surely, of where to get, because going out would be a nightmare because you'd go out to a restaurant. Don't go and out. It would be couples everywhere you'd feel like goddamn bridget jones in a montage i was like i'll be safe in boojum because right Bujum, which is basically for american listeners just chipotle it's a cheap burrito it's place. a cheap Very burrito good. place, especially back then um t- it was tiny back then too i was like i'll just post up at the bar it, it'll be empty uh I, it was couple it was non <laughs> nothing but couples and it somehow made it even more sad that i was just <laughs> because there's nothing uglier than solo eating a burrito facing a wall yeah um surrounded by couples i assume these couples were kind of lady in the tramp style 
starting at both ends of the burrito and meeting in the middle. At least I did have an air of judgment uh, around me that I was like, I was like, fellas, if you're taking your girl to Irish Chipotle on Valentine's Day, we need to do better, kings. We need to do better. <laughs> Irish Chipotle. Those are such cursed words. <laughs> Jesus. Well, hey, thank you so much to everyone for listening to this week's episode of This Paranormal Life. It's fun to do something a little bit different, uh, be current, be with the times. And I thought this week it was a perfect excuse for us to do a Valentine's Day themed episode, which hopefully you guys enjoyed. I would recommend going and checking out some of the paintings that David has done. Maybe if you're over 18, I I, I would say some of these are a little X-rated. Uh, But we will be posting some versions of them uh, on our socials. So check it out on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, We have full video versions of the podcast on YouTube, which is so much fun. You can watch all your favorite bits in HD on the internet. And of course, you got to head over to patreon.com to find episodes that are uh, more normal. Um, yeah, and yet out of this world because they are the too hot for TV, the craziest, the nuttiest cases. Uh, paywalled over at Patreon.com, you can get access to over six years worth of bonus episodes and behind the scenes weekly after party episodes. You can get access for as little as five bucks. Ten bucks gets you pretty much everything, including the after parties. Uh, and then if you want to get into merch and crazy nonsense. Mm-hmm. We got shout outs. We got the Knight of the Commune gold and silver coin. Kit and I are basically your deadbeat online boyfriends. Uh, and it's Valentine's Day and we need why do we, have to be we deadbeat? Need, we need financial support. Oh. That's why. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we We're going to get around to applying for some jobs, babe, but we just need a little change to make it through the week, you know? So you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash just paranormal life and, and support. Your guys, you know? Babe. <laughs> Babe, how was your day? Oh, did you see when we were Young Fest just got announced? Oh, <laughs> like, uh, that would be so cool for us to go see Blink-182. Uh, I'm not, I'm a little light right now. So I don't know if you could, yeah. since it's payday, I don't know if you could maybe from your good job pay for the tickets. And you need help bringing in the, the groceries that you picked up for both of us. That's really great, but I am in the middle of a game right now and it's online, so I can't pause it. So I guess like babe, you didn't get the chicken nuggies. Oh, I, I what the hell? I, sorry, I put. It was them like the one thing I asked on for on the list. I don't know how God. you couldn't see them in the store. Yeah. By the way, the school called again. I don't know what's going on there, but I said they should just talk to you. So I gave them your personal cell phone information so they can call you because like I don't want to have to deal with any of that shit. You know how stressed I get. <laughs> <If> children. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> this is dark, man. <laughs> Uh, we're kidding! Of course, head on over to patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life to support this show. Because hey, we love you. We're glad you're here. We hope you're having a fantastic Valentine's Day. And we're so appreciative of you supporting this podcast. So thank you for tuning in. Kit, any farewell words to the lovebirds out there? Let's do some shout outs for our supporters <laughs> over at patreon.com. Of course, that's what I was just <laughs> teeing up. That's what I was teeing up. Thank you to Gabriel. The Archangel Gabriel Mm -hmm. is so so kind to bless us from Patreon. Usually the only angel that we care about today is the baby. Whatever the f*** his name is. (laughs) The little one. What's his name? Cupid. I forgot about that. Is he an angel? Yeah, they're angel. Yeah. No, he's a cherub. Ah. Which I think is a type of angel. I don't remember. Gabriel, do you know Cupid? If so, can you get in touch? Um, I'd like to get my hands on that bow. Oh. Yeah. Not gonna ask why. (laughs) Thank you, Gabriel, for supporting the show. We appreciate it so much. Thank you to Takran. Tak can run, but they cannot hide. I saw what you did. I saw what you did. Stealing from the commune seed vaults. Oh my god. We we, we only have a single loaf of bread worth of grain left. Yeah. It's despicable that you would t- try and try and take it, even though we took it from you and your family. <laughs> that's despicable that you would steal from the commune like that. How did he get past our guard scarecrows? That's how what I want to know. Guarding the seed vault. Yeah, they're pretty convincing. Do, I, do, own up. Own up, Takran. Confess. Do the honorable thing. We'll make your punishment only a hundred years. Thank you to Andrew. Yeah, Andrew actually wrote in, was thinking of trying to include him in this episode. Um... 
because the email was titled Intergalactic Love, but it turned mm. out it was just the name of his prog rock band that oh, released a I new see. album. So I don't know if those guys have done any weird stuff with aliens or if it's just a cool name for a record. It I is a know. very cool name. Intergalactic Love. It sounds like a funk kind of uh, band. Yeah. You know? Intergalactic Love. Damn. Well, thank you, Andrew. Please send us a copy of the album. Thank you to Frank Luciano. Uh, Frank is also very well known in the commune. Uh, some people will know him from the commune gallery, where he's done some pretty erotic extraterrestrial paintings. Yeah, I think that breaks the T's and C's of the thing. The t of the what? Of the thing. The what? The thing. What are you talking about? Yeah, you can't do that kind of thing. It's 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 against the rules. For for the art gallery? Yes. I don't understand. Why do we have it then, if not for erotic extraterrestrial art? Because <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> We're a family show. How many times do I have to say it? Well, then I won't commission anymore. <laughs> oh, you were paying him. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Frank. And thank you, finally, to Philip Hunt. The hunt is on for Philip. That's right, he managed to escape the three layers of barbed wire fences surrounding the commune, and he has made his escape. So everyone knows this weekend, the hunt is on for Philip, and the winner gets a seed. And, you know, <laughs> I said it's a family show, and it is. The hunt is a family event. You know, there's face painting, there's music, there's, there's erotic, sweet, sweet extraterrestrial ease. art. And we have <laughs> we have kind of small weapons, uh, like slingshots, that the kind of the children can use. Tons of great stuff. We hunt. will find Philip. Thank you, Philip. Thank you to everyone who supports us over on Patreon. You guys are the reason that this show exists, why it can get made every week. Uh, so if you want to join the team and be part of the creation of this podcast, head on over to patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this very weird and insane episode of the podcast. And I hope you're having a fantastic Valentine's Day. We love you and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.